A couple of years back, I did a video over on the Mentor Pilot channel where I explained how a passenger could potentially land the Boeing 737, providing that they had instruction from a trained pilot. Well, today we are going to take that to the test and see if that's actually possible. And the passenger who's going to try this is going to be Tom Scott. <laughs> I want to say a special thank you to the brand new Airline Flight Academy Simulator Center in Dublin with six state-of-the-art flight simulators that provide top-class training services including B737 and A320 type ratings and industry-leading APS MCC courses. After I published my first video on how a passenger could land an airliner, I received a lot of questions asking if this would be possible to do if a passenger would try to do it manually, as in with no help from the autopilot. Of course, I answered, no, I don't think that would be possible. But then I thought, hmm, let's find out. And that's exactly what we will be doing in the first part of the video. In the second part, I will test if my own preferred technique actually works in real life and how a passenger will react to it. So, enjoy! Okay, I'm in position, seatbelt on. I, I mean, I guess this is the first cheat, which is that I would never have got through that cockpit door, right? Absolutely. So we, we have to do this as a theoretical scenario where you have gotten access to the cockpit in some fashion. But in reality, uh, in an emergency like this, a passenger would never get access through the closed cockpit door. Okay, Tom, are you with me? Let's go for it. If you hold on to the, um, the steering yoke on your right hand side, there is a button by your right thumb. Do you find it? The one that says autopilot disengage. The very same, yes. Shall I push it? When you push it, you're going to have a terrifying siren going off, all right? Telling you that it's, that it's just you and me now. And um, so press it once, and when that siren goes off, press it again to get rid of the siren. Confirmed, we're on manual. OK, on your, put your hands on both thrust levers, and then there's a button on your right thumb. Just press that as well. That, was dis that will disconnect the outer throttle. Confirmed, auto throttle disengaged. Okay, perfect. Now we're going to concentrate more or less on what you see on your primary flight display. That's the screen that you straight in front of you. So what speed are you keeping at the moment? Uh, 224. So I want you to bring back the thrust levers a little bit, like bring them back a little bit and feel what happens to the aircraft when it does so. Feel that it, it's trying to pitch forward by itself. Can you feel that? Yes, I can. Pitch it forward, but not too much, just a couple of degrees. And you see on the horizon, you know, the, uh, the um, attitude indicator that you have a cross in front of you. Just bring it down a couple of degrees, but don't let the speed decrease too much, okay? Just keep the speed going around the speed that you have now. Understood. It's less of a cross and more of a T-shape at this point. I appear to be descending quite rapidly. I'm going to pull back a little on the stick. That's it, okay. That warning that you just heard is that you're away from your, uh, from your cleared altitude, but we're going we're gonna to disregard that. Continue to descend, but not too high rate. Keep the speed where you are, all right, 220. And we're going to aim at getting you down to about 3,000 feet, okay? So do you see where the altitude band is? Yes, I do. Okay, so as long as you're descending, and you're leveling off at 3,000 feet, we're going to be fine. But make sure that the speed doesn't start to decrease. OK, I'm holding the speed at about 198. We are descending. Uh, if the speed is 190, you're too slow. So pitch forward a little bit. When you say pitch forward, does that mean go down or go up? That means go down. It means uh, push your, uh, your yoke away from you. So push it forward, but, but very little. Remember, it's a big aircraft, this. So just push it forward a little bit, OK? And on your left-hand thumb, you, can tr you have a trim switch, those, that's the one that moves those little wheels next to you. That's, if you feel that you need to use a lot of force when you're flying, you need to move that switch either forward or backwards to get that force away, right? You're trimming out the aircraft, making it easier for you to fly. Do you mean right thumb? It might be, yeah, yeah it might be on your right thumb, actually. You're actually in the, in the first officer seat, so that makes sense. Can you, can you see those? Try them. Move them forward and see if those little wheels move. Got it. OK, so use those. If you feel that the forces are being too much, then use them to either go forward or backward in order to feel better, basically. I'm not going to tell you how to do it. You're going to have to find that out yourself. Now, I see that you're turning quite a lot. So if you turn a little bit right, please, 
uh, just light, maybe 20 degrees of bank. You see that on your primary flight display. Confirming, banking right, 20 degrees. Perfect, that's it. Now, what I would like you to do is add a little bit of thrust and just feel how the aircraft feels different when you do so, all right? So add a bit of thrust and feel how that pushes the nose upwards. That's just to pre prepare you for what's gonna happen later on when we get onto the approach. Do you feel how that's, that's wanting the, that the whole aircraft wants to pitch up when you do so? Yeah. Yeah, so that's what you can expect. Anytime that you move the thrust lever, the nose is going to want to do that. So you need to anticipate that and counteract it, okay? So you're going to feel different. The aircraft's going to feel different when we select flaps out now. It's going to want to pitch up. So you need to counteract that by pitching forward, and then you can use those strip switches on your right-hand side to move them forward as well to take away that force, okay? Okay, should I do that now? You can take flaps one and try it. Flaps one, continuing to bank 20 degrees right. Yeah, uh, you can level the turn off and just continue straight ahead. Speed is dropping rapidly. Yeah, so you need to add thrust. Yeah, so keep the speed. Keep the, This time you can set the speed to about 190 knots, okay? Speed, okay, hang on, I need to level. I need to level this out, I need to level this out. Speed is 208, had a bit of a panic there, but I think I've leveled it out. Perfect, all right, so take the thrust off again and continue to descend. We want you down to 4,000 feet. I have no idea whether I'm going up or down unless I check the instrument display in front of me. That's, that's the only thing you have, right? You need to look in front of you. At the moment, you are descending again, but very slowly. So you can take a little bit more thrust off, all right? So boom, the thrust levers back. And we're going down to 4,000 to 4, feet. That's 1,000 feet to go. 4,800. Perfect. Now, I want you to turn left, okay? Left, and try to hit a heading of 240 degrees. 240 degrees, got it. Uh, where the hell do I see my heading? Yeah, so the heading is right below your primary flight display. Right? If you look at that cross you have in front of you, if you go straight below that, you'll see your heading. Confirmed. Currently reading through... Currently reading 360, 359, whatever. Okay, perfect. Turn left, it's gonna be almost 180 degrees around, right? So turn left onto a heading of 180 degrees initially. We're just gonna to have to stabilize here before we get in for the, uh, for the approach. Heading for 180 degrees, copy. Correct. What's your speed? Speed is 228, descending through 4,300 feet. Okay, so when you're down to 4,000 feet, we're gonna bring that speed back to 190 knots. We're taking him out and then in again, so that we get a little bit more training and get to feel the aircraft a little bit, because he's going to need it. Uh, heading is 242. I am quite happy with how I came out of that turn, if I'm honest with you. I won't be smug for too long, but I'm happy with that. Yeah, that's good. Now you're getting a little bit too close to the airport, though, so I want you to continue that left-hand turn to heading of like 150 degrees, okay? Oh yeah, you, we were aiming for 180, weren't we? And I stopped at 240. That's me being an idiot. Repeat the heading you want, please. 150 degrees. Aiming for 150, have passed 4,000 feet. I'm gonna try and stabilize. That's fine. Actually, if we can get you down to 3,000 feet, it's even better. Continuing to 3,000 feet, aiming for 180. Speed steady at 223. Perfect, but once you're down to 3,000 feet, I don't want you to go below that, okay? And I don't want you to go below 190 knots, because that's keeping you alive. Yeah, I overshot. Stand by. You're out of the sea, so it's no problem. Oh, this is very difficult. This is very... I knew it was very difficult. So I don't want to, over, I don't want to overload him now, either. It's, it's a lot of stuff happening. And I've only got... Like, that was 4,000 to 3,000 feet with almost no attention paid. And if I can go up that fast, I can go down that fast. You with me, Tom? You, it looks like you're turning to the right. Still with you, still with you, just flying. Okay, what's the speed? Speed 223, altitude 3164, sorry, 3140. Uh, heading, heading is 190. Okay, perfect. Can you read out, can you see if, the, if it says VOR lock and glide slope in white on your, on your FMA? Uh, both in green, VOR lock, LNAV, and G S. Are they green? Confirmed, green. 2500. Uh, 2,500 feet, I'm pulling up. Okay, can you just read out what it says on your FMA, please? Stand by, flying. <laughs> He's getting too close. He's getting too close. How far away is he? 
It's less than 10 miles away, so this way. I see the runway. I have visual on the runway dead ahead, but I'm several degrees, several degrees off. Yeah, okay, so basically you're, you're way too high, you're way too close to the runway now. So instead of getting you to land from this position, we're going to turn you back out to sea and get you back down again, all right? So what I want you to do is just stabilize yourself at 3,000 feet, and when you can, turn right to a heading of about 0, 020 0 degrees. 0, 020 0 degrees, turning right. It's lined up now. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on, right. Start to level out, start to level out, start to level out. 175 knots, that's good. 278 is bang on the center line. Great. Do you see the runway by any chance? I have nothing but cloud. That's too bad. Okay, uh, make sure you don't turn too much to the right, okay? You're on a heading of 290 degrees now, so just I keep just that diamond that I, in the center. I just noticed that I turned completely the wrong way. That was me being an idiot. No, no, just keep that diamond in the center, right? It, it'll tell you what to do. Do you see, by the way, on the flight director, is that, that magenta um, vertical line, is that in the middle? Uh, yes. Keep that in the middle. That's going to tell you exactly how to fly. The idea is that you are supposed to be with you see that white rectangle in the middle? That's you. And if that's in the middle of that cross, then you're bang on. Okay, that's what it's you're looking for. It's not a cross, it's a T. Yeah, it's a T now because you're, the glide slope is above you. Uh, that should come, come down. The diamond is way off to the left. Do I need to steer left or right? If the diamond is to the left, you need to turn to the left. Confirm, doing that now. What about the diamond on the right hand side? What's that doing? Still empty. And still above you? It's still empty, it's not locked onto anything. No, but it's still above you. Yes. That's fine then, then you're still below the glide slope, so that's fine, you don't need to start descending yet. Just get yourself stabilized on that localizer on a heading of 280 more or less. I'm flying purely by instruments, I'm just in cloud. Yep, that's what we do. Speed 191, altitude 2660, diamond off to the right but correcting. That's it. Small corrections. Try Once you have it in the center, more or less in the center, try not to correct with more than maybe 10 degrees left or right. Not more than that. Understood. Turning the wrong way. That's so counterintuitive. I'm turning the wrong way. Oh, hell. Now the problem is going to be when it gets on the glide, because following both the glide and the localizer simultaneously, it's hard. I need that instruction again. If the diamond is off to the right, do I turn right or left? To the right, but you're turning way too much, too much to the right now. Small corrections. I know it's small corrections. I know it's small corrections. I'm just not making small corrections because I'm panicking because this is... So you need to turn left now. Understood. This is extremely convincing. There's so much to keep track of. I have, I have a glide slope diamond. Try to get yourself back on the localizer, okay? Because you think you're a little bit off to the, uh, on the right-hand side, so you might have turned a bit left. Now, when you hit the, uh, the glide slope diamond, when that comes into the middle, then bring the thrust levers back to about 50%. You'll see in the... On the, uh, the third screen from your right, there's instrumentation, all right? Engine instrumentation. On the very top of that, there is an N1 indicator. Just put the thrust to about 53%. Okay, I have visual on the runway. Okay, what's the diamond on the right-hand side doing? It is dead level. Okay, start pitching down. Pitch down to about yeah, a little bit minus. You want to descend with about 800 feet per minute. I'm not on the ILS. I can't see the... I, I'm, I'm several degrees off here. Okay, but you see the runway. Just point for the runway at this point. If you're visual, point for the runway and keep descending. Now, what we need to do is you need to turn, put the gear down, okay? Put the gear down. Gear is going down. Bring the flaps to 15. Flaps to 15. Repeat what you said about thrust earlier, please. Yeah, bring the thrust back. And if you look at your engine instrumentation that's on the third screen on your left, at the very top there, put the uh, N1 value to 53%. And continue to descend. It's too, it's, it's too high. It's too high. It is too high. Where the hell's the N1 value? Don't matter, don't matter. Pitch down. You're too high now. Can you see the runway still? Yes, I can still see the runway. Okay, can you see if there's a couple of uh, lights on the left-hand side, white or red? All white, all white. I know I mean too white, too red. Yeah, so pitch down, take thrust off to idle, okay? Confirmed. 
This is not a good angle to be coming into a runway from. This is not good, this is not good, this is not good. Okay, so how is it looking? Are you descending? Not good. Keep descending, okay. Um, and two I think lights, you're leveling, two red you're lights. Try quite aligned there. with the runway now. Keep descending, bring the flaps back to 30, please. Keep the thrust at idle and keep descending until you get at least one red. When you do that, start pitching up. I have two wide lights and two red lights. I'm gonna try and hold it there. That's perfect, that's perfect. So the thrust should come up a little bit now because if you're taking flaps 40 and you don't have any thrust, it's going to stall. So bring the thrust up to about midway. Understood. 1,000 feet. Okay, you have the gear down and the flaps to 30, confirm. Confirmed. Okay, just aim at the very beginning of the runway. Now, when you get over the runway, close the thrust levers and keep the altitude, more or less, all right? Let it just sink down on the runway itself. Once you land, you have to use those brakes at the top of your feet, okay? The brakes to stop it, otherwise it will not stop. Understood. He's got the gear down, he's got the flaps to 30. He is 800 feet, he's got the speed. 500. 140, he's bang on the speed, actually. I'm aiming for the taxiway, there's no way I can hit the runway. Okay, if you have a light, nice long straight ahead of you, then use that. And just make sure that you set it down on the asphalt, okay? Breed. 200 feet. No! Crash. And that was a crash. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, man. Oh, it was so, I, 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 there was just so many things at the end there. Woo! <laughs> oh, well, thank you for trying. <laughs> well, we got you, we got, did you crash on the runway or in the airport vicinity at least? I was lined up what I think was pretty well for a taxiway. Like, I, I, I tried to square it up at the end, didn't quite get it, but I had a taxiway in front of me. And then I just tried to brake and flare and everything, and it just hit way too hard. Yeah, right, right, yeah, yeah. But at least you happen on the airport perimeter, which means that you have emergency services and everything there, which is <laughs> pretty much the best we could expect from this kind of situation, so well done. I'll take that, thank you very much, Peter. <laughs> So, as you can see, trying to land a Boeing 737 manually with no previous flight training is really, really hard to do. And it turns out that trying to instruct someone to do that via radio is not that easy either, even when they are as relatively calm and technically minded as Tom is. So, let's now see how he does it when I introduce him to our third crew member, the autopilot. I think that you are going to be amazed. but. I'll let you judge that for yourself after this short message from my sponsor. I'm so happy to have Manscaped as the sponsor of this video. Manscaped is a really high quality provider of grooming products for men and they've just released their latest trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. Now the Lawnmower is a really high precision grooming device. I use it for example when I trim my beard, but because it has some really sharp ceramic blades and skin safe technology, you can also use it to trim other places. The lawnmower is waterproof, which means you can use it in the shower or you can just rinse it in water. And it has this really cool LED light, which lights up the area that you're trimming. And I find that really helpful. If you go for the Performance 4.0 package, you'll also get the Weed Whacker nose and ear trimmer and some ball toner and ball deodorant for those special places. If you think that sounds awesome or hmm, I should get that for my partner, well then use the link here in the description below and the code MENTOR for a whopping 20% off the original price. Your balls will thank you. First of all, before we start this exercise, I just want to make sure that you're relaxed, take a few deep breaths, and remember that the, you're not actually alone in the cockpit now. We, we see the autopilot as our third crew member. That's the way that we pilots view it, okay? That, that crew member is perfectly capable of flying this aircraft. So what we're gonna do from now on is we're going to try to tell that autopilot what to do in order to get you safely down on the ground, okay? Now, the top, if you look below the glare shield, the, the top panel, below the glare shield, it's called a mode control panel, right? It has a lot of uh, windows with numerical figures in them and a lot of buttons. Do you know which panel I'm talking about? I believe so. That would be directly below the, the windscreen, the windshield. Yeah, that's correct. That panel controls the autopilot. 
okay? You will see on the right hand side that there is one button that says Charlie, Mike, Delta and it would be green. Confirm? Confirm. Yeah, that's the autopilot button. Do not press that because that disconnects the autopilot and that would be a very bad day. <laughs> Understood. Not touching that button. If you can find the uh, window that says altitude on it, tell me when you've seen it. I see it, it reads 15,000. Just below that there's a knob. Can you turn that knob until the value reads 4,000 feet instead? Confirm that now reads 4,000. Okay, so the next thing I want you to do is go down below that knob and go a little bit to the left. You'll find a button that says Lima Victor Lima Charlie Hotel Golf. Confirmed. Yeah, that's what we call level change. When you press that button, the aircraft is going to start descending. That means that the auto throttles will start moving backwards and the aircraft is going to start pitching forward. That's completely normal, so don't be freaked out if that happens. Okay, should I push that button now? Yeah, please push that button. Button pushed. To the right of that button, there's a button that says Hotel Delta Golf Cell. Confirmed. Yeah, can you make sure that the value in that, uh, in the window above that button says something like uh, 270 degrees? It says 309. Uh, also, the wheels next to what I assume is the throttle just started spinning on their own and the, the plane is now banking very, very, very heavily to the left. Yeah, that, that's because it's following the LNAV track that it has pre-programmed. Don't worry about that. Turn that uh, button to until the numerical figure says 270 on it, okay? 270, confirmed. And now press heading cell. Done. Okay, perfect. So is the aircraft now starting to turn the other way? Yes, we're now turning to the right. Uh, we're still descending. Uh, we're just passing through 12,400 now. Yeah, just to give you a little bit of information about what we're doing now, that numerical number that you just put in is a value between 0 and 359. That's the compass rows. So when you have 270 in and you press heading select, it means that the aircraft is now going to fly due west. Okay, so the, the aircraft is now descending down to 4000 feet. That's what you've told it. And it's now following heading 270. So we're good, right? The aircraft is doing exactly what it's supposed to do. And what we want to figure out now is how much time we have to do this. So in the um, screen that is second from the left, in the right hand corner there, there should be a, a value of how much fuel in total that you have on board. Can you read that out to me? Yep, confirmed. Total 3.8. 3.8. Okay, that's perfect. So that's, that's quite a lot of fuel. So we have plenty of time. All right. So time is not an issue. That's good. That's good. Okay, from now on it's going to start to be a little bit more complicated, okay, because now we have the aircraft on the control, so now we're going to try to get it into a position from which it can out the land. Uh, so, first of all, I want you to get your seat adjusted. There is, if you look down on your seat, on the left hand side, there's a lever with an H on it, hotel. Do you see that lever? Yes, I found it. Okay, if you pull that one, you will be able to move your seat forward and backwards and out to the right. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to get into a position where you can rest your feet on the pedals easily. Okay? If this is an ejector seat, I'm going to kill him. <sighs> yep, okay, I'm in position. Okay, perfect. And can you confirm that you have your seat belt on as well? Seat belt is on. All right, so what we need to do now is that you're going way too fast, okay? We, we need to get your speed back in order to make a safe landing. So if you go up to the mode control panel again and you go out to the left side, uh, the second window from the left should read iOS or Mac. Can you tell me again what the number is in that window? 2901. Okay, that means that you're flying, flying 291 knots at the moment. Can you bring that value back to 220 knots? 220, confirmed. Perfect. Uh, so the, if you look down on your primary flight display again, that's the display that's straight in front of you. It has the speed on the left and the altitude on the left. Sorry, the speed to the left and the altitude on the right. Can you just tell me if the speed is reducing? No, it's not. There was also just a very loud beep that sounded like a dial tone for about two seconds. Okay, you can disregard that for now. That's because you are about to level off at your altitude. That's good. Okay, uh, uh, the speed is, is not decreasing. We're still at 262. 
Well, if, it, if you're 262 and you were at 293, then it is reducing. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm just nearly panicking slightly. I kind of forgot this was a simulator for a minute. OK, good. <laughs> Whenever you feel like that, just take a deep breath, right? We, have, we can keep doing this for over an hour, right? And you're well clear of any terrain, and the aircraft is flying beautifully. So don't worry. Just take a deep breath, and we're going to get you through this nicely, OK? OK. So while we have a second now, we're going to start to try to prepare the uh, radio boxes for a outer land, OK? OK, I'm now in full cloud, and I'm not sure if that's more or less terrifying than seeing the ground. OK, yeah, ready. So if you look to the center pedestal, that's the pedestal that's in between you and the captain's seat, you'll see that there are several radio boxes, OK? Now, on the top right and the top left corner, there are the, the um, comm radios, right? Those are the ones that we're using to communicate. But the, there are two um, boxes, two radio boxes that are just below that, that says something like ILS or GLS on them. Do you see those? Yeah, confirmed. I've got ILS 111.75 and VOR 114.10. What I want you to do is I want you to dial in on the numerical pad on first the right one, uh, the following frequency if you're ready. Ready. 111.35. VOR now reads 111.35. Okay, you see that there are two fixes or the two, two buttons below that says mode on them. Yep. Can you just switch one of them? It's supposed to say, say ILS. ILS 11135. Okay, ILS is now set to 11135. Okay, can you f confirm that that is the one on the top? No, that's the one on the bottom. The bottom now reads ILS 11135. The top reads ILS 11175. Okay, so on the left-hand side of that same panel, there is an active and standby button. It looks like a two arrows. Push that so that you have the ILS 11135 as active, the top one. Done. Perfect. Can you do exactly the same on the opposite um, nav radio as well? It looks exactly the same. Confirmed left one is now ILS 111.35 at the top display, active. Okay, perfect. Now we're going to turn you, to turn the aircraft again. So if you go back up to the mode control panel and look at the heading uh, window again, can you turn that knob below that to the left on, until you get a number of 100 on it? 100 confirmed. The plane immediately started banking heavily to the left. Yeah, that's exactly what we wanted to do. Because what, what I'm doing now is I'm actually turning you downwind for the landing, okay? We still have plenty of time. And if there's anything that you're wondering about at this stage, please ask me. If you hear any noises or anything like that that, that feels unnerving, let me know, okay? The, uh, the throttle and whatever the wheels are next to it spinning on their own are very unnerving, but I'm going to assume that's a good thing. Those things that are spinning, those are the trim wheel. Okay, those trim wheels, they are, are making sure, but it's part of the autopilot system and it's just making sure that the, that the different rudders, in this case the elevator, doesn't have to work too hard. So it's resetting the, the back part, the back wing actually. So it's completely normal. I cannot overstate how unnerving it is to be in a motion-based simulator for the first time in my life. It is so convincing. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's the idea. The two windows that are to the far left and the two right, uh, and the far right says course above them. Can you see those? Yeah, course is 222. Two, two. Okay, perfect. Now, I want you to set 278 in both of those windows and confirm, please. Two seven eight in both windows confirmed. Can you tell me what speed you're keeping at the moment? Two two one nine. Uh, below the screens, you can see that there's two things that looks like little commu computers with numerical pads and stuff on them. Do you see those? Yep, I see them. In between those, you have something called auto break. Do you see that? Yes, I see it. Perfect. Can you turn that auto break knob to three, please? Auto break is on three. Good. That is going to arm the, the braking of the aircraft, okay? So once you're down on the ground, the aircraft is going to brake on its, on its own. Next thing that we want to do is we want to arm the speed brake. Now, do you see the thrust levers? Yes, I do. They are moving slowly forwards and backwards as the autopilot works. 
I know this is the beauty of flying Boeings because Boeings will always tell you what the aircraft is doing. Even when the autopilot is engaged, you can see how the thrust is being changed. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to look to the left of the uh, the thrust of the thrust levers. There's something called Sierra Papa Delta brake, speed brake. There, do you see it? Yep, I see it. Okay, I want you to lift that straight up and then just move it slightly back. It's just like you're you're putting it up on a ledge. Can you try to do I that? I see a position called armed. I'll move it to that. That's correct. Done. Perfect. Now you're coming a beam the airfield now, which is great. So the next thing that I want you to do is to the right of the thrust levers, there is a flap uh, lever. Do you see that? I see it. I want you to move that flap lever to the five position. It, you have to go through a gate, first one, and then you can move it to five. Yeah, that, that caused the trim wheels to spin a lot. Yeah, so what's happening now is that the, uh, the, the, the flaps, you know, those things at the back of the wings, they're now extending. That's causing a lot of drag and a lot of shift in, um, in the way that the aircraft needs to fly. So that's why the trims are moving. You know, they're trying to readjust to, to this new configuration. But this also allows us to reduce the speed. So if you go back up to the speed selector, bring that back to uh, 180 knots. 180. I can actually feel us slowing down in here. I'm going to brief you a little bit about what's going to happen in the final just so that you don't freak out because a lot of things is going to happen fairly quickly then, okay? Go for it. The other thing that we need to discuss is after landing. The only thing that this aircraft will not be able to do automatically is to maintain the, uh, the direction once it's on the ground. You will have to do that using your feet, okay? Okay. The thing to remember is that you don't need to push almost anything, especially not at high speed. It's just basically a light squeeze left or right if you see that it's deviating from the center line. It probably won't, but if it does, that's all you need to do. And do not, at the top of the, of the pedals, you'll see that there is the, the brakes, right? Don't touch those, because that will disconnect the, uh, the automatic braking system, and we don't want that to happen. All right, let's, uh, let's land this. <laughs> Perfect. You know what you can do now? You can go up to the altitude window and you can descend and uh, you can set 3,000 feet in that altitude window. Let me know when you've done that. <laughs> done. I briefly dialed it way too low, but that's fine. We've got 3,000 in there now. Perfect. Press uh, level change. That's in Lima, Victor Lima, Sierra Hotel Golf again. Done. This will cause the aircraft to descend to a lower altitude, which is good. And that turned off the speed one. So presumably that was another beeping noise and a lot of trim. Is that okay? Perfectly okay. I can see on the radar now that you're descending. So as long as the autopilot is engaged, this is perfectly fine. Yeah, confirming we're leveling off and we are at 3,000 feet. Uh, I want you to locate a button called Alpha Papa Papa uh, on the mode control panel. Do you see that? Got it. Okay. Now I would like you to turn the heading bog, once again the bog below the heading window, in right, as in clockwise, until you have heading 240 degrees in the window. 240 confirmed. There is a lot of ocean out of my right hand side window. <laughs> yeah, now we're turning you into final, okay? Just tell me when, well, when you're almost on to the heading of 240, so when the aircraft is about to level off again. Will do. There's this little thing in the back of my brain that's telling me I'm in a plane right now. This is extremely convincing. Okay, you should be almost there, correct? 230, 235, coming into 240 now. I can see the coastline ahead of me. Perfect. Can you press the approach button now, please? Pressed. So now you're, you're closing in on the, uh, on the localizer. So very soon, uh, in you know, half a minute or so, the aircraft is going to capture the localizer and it's going to make a fairly abrupt, abrupt right-hand turn. Tell me when that happens. Will do. Now, on your speed tape, so your primary flight display on the left, can you see a, a, a small green um, Values or um, dot saying five? Yep, I see up one and five. It's currently sitting uh, just below one. Perfect. Can, if you go up to the speed bug again, can you move the speed bug back so that the, the white speed bug that you see on the tape moves so they sit exactly on top of the five? Confirmed. That uh, works out to about one six five. 
Perfect, exactly. So now that's the minimum maneuver speed for the flap that you're at. So that's perfect. Confirmed. Abrupt right hand turn that I didn't notice because I was busy. I've got single Charlie Hotel on my, uh, on my dashboard and we appear to have just lined up. Excellent. Perfect. So now we are exactly where we want to be. Now, what we're going to do now is we are going to start extending the gear. You see that there's a landing gear. It's shaped like a gear. Can you just move that to down? That's going to start making a lot of noise. That's the gear being extended. Now, the next thing we're going to do is if you go down to the flap selector, can you move that to 15, please? Flap selector on 15. Perfect. Now, if you look at your speed tape again, there should be a 15 bug that just appeared. Confirm? Confirmed. I move the speed to that? Yes, do that. Done. That is 155. Perfect. So now there's very little left for, for us to set up before we will out to land this thing. So the next thing that I want you to do is tell me when the aircraft goes into glide slope capture. You'll notice that, but the aircraft is starting to pitch down and the thrust will probably reduce a bit. I'll let you know. Yep, confirm that we're pitching downwards. Altitude is decreasing. Perfect, perfect. That's exactly what. Now you're captured on the glide slope and the localizer. So now we're well set up. Now the next thing that you need to I do is runway. if you go up to those autopilot buttons that I talked about, you can see those four ones at the top right part of the mode control panel. Yes, I see it. A slash P engage. Also, I have visual on the runway. Excellent. Now, do you, which one of the CMDs are illuminated? The top right button, CMD, is illuminated. Okay, press the other one, the left one, the alpha. Both illuminated. Excellent. That means that we've now set up for the auto land. Okay, so now from this point onward, the aircraft is going to do it by itself. The next thing we want to do is we want to reduce the speed back to landing speed. So if you take the flap selector and bring it all the way back to flap 40. Flap 40, got it. Uh, we just had the 2500 announcement. A lot of trim happening. Yeah, because it's now it's, it's getting a lot of a lot of, um, uh, of trim changes now because the flaps are extending to its full position. So that's perfectly normal. Bring the speed back to 145 knots. Speed set to 145. 145 knots is perfectly fine. Now, just a final check. Now, make sure that you have your seat belts on. Yep, seat belts on, and I've got visual on the runway with two white and two red lights on each side. Excellent. So you're banging the slots. The aircraft is flying perfectly. Plus 100. Minimums. Uh, flare and minimums were just called. Yeah, minimums that's called. That's, that's as we briefed before. That's for the previous uh, departure. So that's fine. And you see the runway, so that's not a problem. Remember now that once the aircraft touches down, which it's going to do by itself, once that's happening, then you are the one that's going to control it on the ground with the rudders. So don't do any big um, adjustments, very small, smooth adjustments on the runway. And just let it come to a complete stop, okay? 1,000. Understood, just passed through 1,000 and I've got the Dublin smokestacks over to the left of me. All right, uh, here goes. Yeah, I have flare on the, on the uh, display in front of me. Perfect, that means that the aircraft knows that it's going to do an outer land, so that's good news. I just want to tell you, good luck. We're all counting on you. <laughs> I mean, we're counting on the autopilot at this point, but I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, you're getting close now, Matt. Very close. I, I, I'm just going to keep my feet resting on the pedals, ready for, for arrival. Uh, we are at 300 feet. Uh, here we go. Let me know when the aircraft has come to a complete stop. I feel like I should be holding this and that's not my job the computer's doing everything i just need there to just go. stay back do not touch anything until we're down 50 50 feet 40, 30 20 10 10 flaring Stop. there we go we're good little little bit of little bit to the right oh, let's a little bit to the right <laughs> little bit to the right Come on, Tom. There we go. 
the aircraft is at a complete stop, we have landed. <laughs> <laughs> well done, man. So, that's you, that's you landing an airliner. That's Boeing 737 <laughs> down on the ground. Just you, me, and the autopilot. All right. My man Tom. Thank you so, so much. Welcome to Dublin. <laughs> I mean, the computer did everything. It was knowing what to push and having the confidence to know what to push. Yeah, but you see how well this aircraft does yeah. things when you just tell it. I mean, that's what yeah. I meant by having a tr third crew member. But you're here, we're and here. You're on the ground, you know? Hey. It's exactly what we want <laughs> on the asphalt. <laughs> so uh, cool, man. Well done, thank well you. done.